Hi, Siobhan. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I wanted to share with you a little bit of a pet peeve that's definitely come up a lot lately. I don't know if you were aware that the guidelines have changed uh, regarding fasting with lipids. Were you aware of that? Yes, I have heard this come up. And I don't know if you were also aware, I think you are because I think I've complained to you quite a bit, that this is quite a problem, especially for those of us in the low-carb community. Yes. So I just happened to have some amazing news that I hadn't revealed until this point in time that actually I've already done an experiment that dovetailed on my last major experiment where following my very last lipid number that was fully fasted, I had been fasting for about 12 hours, I then immediately had a fat shake that was full of heavy whipping cream and uh, was sweetened with stevia and um, was unsweetened uh, cocoa powder and that's it. I had that and then about two and a half hours later I had my blood drawn again. Now if we were to believe the existing guidelines that wouldn't have had that much of a meaningful effect on my cholesterol numbers, right? Right. So if you were to guess right now, would you say that my lipid numbers changed at all? Changed a little bit or changed a lot? Um, I would say considering you were drinking pure, almost pure fat, I would guess it had a pretty significant impact. Now, part of the reason I did a fat shake was some people might argue that maybe fat takes a little bit longer to be absorbed by the cells if it was mixed in with other food that, for example, had fiber, if it was mixed in with other food that might have carbohydrates. So sometimes when you have lots of carbs with fat, that can further slow the uptake of the fatty acids in the um, vascular system. So I did intentionally have a fairly fast absorbing version of fat on purpose for this very reason. So you also may or may not be aware that chylomicrons, we're told, uh, will be absorbed within a matter of minutes. Mm -hmm. And I regularly say in my presentation that uh, it could be minutes to hours depending on who you read. And sure enough, I've always been a bit suspicious as to whether or not, indeed, even in the pure liquid fat form, we would see them being absorbed super fast. So I was very happy to be able to get this experiment down while I had already had not only the cardio check to be able to check my blood, but to actually have full lab tests pulled from a phlebotomist. So here are the results of those numbers. Now, this first set I've already revealed in the blog post, which is that my cholesterol, my total cholesterol was uh, 211 and my uh, calculated LDL came down all the way to 113. Mm -hmm. My triglycerides were 146, which I did kind of expect coming to the very end of this experiment, and that impacts the calculated LDL. My HDL cholesterol was 69. Now, what changed two and a half hours later? Well, actually, my total cholesterol had gone to 220. Again, the prior score was 211. What do you suppose happened to my triglycerides? I would guess they shot up, but I'm not sure how much. Eh, the original score was 146. Take a wild guess, just for fun. Um, 300? That's very close. Triglycerides <laughs> went to 270. Wow. <laughs> From 146 to 270, two and a half hours later when I had my blood drawn. My HDL cholesterol hardly moved. It went from 69 to 68. And the kicker, my LDL cholesterol dropped from 113 to 98, now holding the record for the lowest LDL cholesterol I have. But there's a catch. Why haven't I been bragging about this low LDL cholesterol? Because triglycerides are part of the Friedwald equation that calculates um. the LDL cholesterol. 
And that's why I know that that's kind of a virtual number. And that's why oftentimes you see people with very high triglycerides with amazingly lower LDL cholesterol and doctors going, ah, you're good enough right there. <laughs> the larger moral of this story is fast. Please fast, especially if you are a low carber coming into a lipid test because if you're having a fatty meal, you're physically increasing the triglycerides in your bloodstream. This is not speculative. This is simple molecular accounting. That's actually what you are physically doing. It goes into your gut. It gets packaged ultimately into chylomicrons in your bloodstream. Now the total residence time, that could get discussed and argued about. But the one thing that I think nobody disagrees on, no matter who you read, is that if you wait at least 12 hours, you can be pretty confident you'll have no remaining chylomicrons, which are the low-density lipoproteins that come from food you eat. You'll only have the lipoproteins that come from your liver, the VLDLs, ultimately remodeling to LDLs, and therefore you'll have a more consistent reading with your other lipid scores. It's playing yep. with fire to have food within any reasonable range, especially if it's fatty food, uh, within any reasonable range from your um, your blood draw for the lipid test. Agreed. 12 to 14 hours. That's that's what I tend to suggest. Yes. I would say at a bare, bare minimum, eight hours. But I'm really kind of punchy about this. I'd really like forever. It's, you know, just make sure the last meal that you had from the night before is 12 hours time from when you get your blood draw the morning after. You're going to sleep through most of your fast. So it should be relatively easy, particularly if you're on a low-carb, high-fat diet. Agreed. Thank you for watching. Of course, like, comment, subscribe, but more than anything, share to those people, especially in the low-carb community, who may be taking cholesterol tests and not realizing how important it is that they fast before them.